Well, hello. Uh, welcome to the Alaska Sea Life Center's Tell Aquarium. If you've never been here before, uh, that's a okay. My name is Alex. I'm joined here by Haley today. Uh, and we have been doing uh, Sunday fish sketch now for the past couple weekends. Uh, and we were really excited this week to hear that the theme for Sunday fish sketch was just going to be the Alaska Sea Life Center uh, and the fish we have here. Um, so I think what we're going to do first is uh, we've got a little clip, and this clip just by itself will be live after, uh, after this whole uh, shindig, but um, we went around and we asked some of the folks that work at the Sea Life Center, what is your favorite fish at the Sea Life Center? Um, and we got a couple of responses, and we just thought we'd maybe use it as a little bit of inspiration for those of you that uh, maybe you're needing inspiration. Maybe you're like, I don't know. Uh, now, if you haven't seen our video already that lists some of the fish here, uh, that went up this morning and was actually shared uh, on Twitter with the hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch. Um, and so that video kind of goes through about 15 different types of fish that we have here at the Sea Life Center uh, and just takes a look at them and uh, kind of maybe will hopefully inspire you. Uh, what sort of fish from the Sea Life Center do you want to sketch for this Sunday's Fish Sketch? Uh, but this clip here that we're going to watch, this is actually uh, just people saying what their favorite fish at the Sea Life Center is. So we'll pick that on up, and uh, I actually need to change the, the hashtag up here. We've got our usual Telequarium. We do live streams here, live programs, new programs, uh, every day on our YouTube channel, so you can always tune in for that. But since today is Sunday Fish Sketch uh, specific, I'll swap that on over to Sunday Fish Sketch. And without further ado, we're going to watch this uh, little clip. So enjoy. When we heard that the fishy theme of this week's Sunday fish sketch was going to be the Alaska Sea Life Center and the fish that make it special, we thought we would ask some of the folks that work here, what's your favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center? My favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center is the grunt sculpin. They're a really cute fish and they're fun to watch because they often hop around on their large pectoral fins and they also like to camouflage themselves in hollowed out barnacles. Take a look at how adorable he is. How could you not love this guy? When it comes to sketching, I think you can't beat the rockfish. Uh, my favorite fish at the center is the canary rockfish because it stands out amongst the others in the bird habitat. My favorite group of fish are the flatfish. I find them super interesting. I like that their eyes are on the same side of their body, and I really like their camouflage, especially when they're really little down in those rocks. My favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center are the crescent gunnels because they always seem so curious when you come up to the window to interact with them, and plus they're just adorable. My favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center are the gunnels that we have for a really simple reason. They're super charismatic. I think they look like dancing spaghetti noodles. They're fun. My favorite fish is the herring as a collective whole because it looks like something Shakira would wear. My favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center is the decorated war bonnet because it looks like it has a piece of broccoli in the middle of its forehead. My favorite fish is the decorated war bonnet because they look like something out of a Dr. Seuss book. My favorite fish is the wolf eel because they're intelligent, just like me. And I've got to admit, the wolf eel is my favorite as well. Nine times out of ten, this is how you see her, just hiding in her den. But the truth is, she can be very interactive with us when we dive in the habitat to clean, and we'll even swim back and forth to take food directly from our hands. So, there's some of our favorites, and now we want to know, what's your favorite fish at the Alaska Sea Life Center? We hope you'll join in this week's Sunday Fish Sketch to show us, by posting your sketch on Twitter with the hashtag Sunday Fish Sketch. Until then, happy sketching! Alrighty, well, uh, there was the clip. Uh, I have disappeared into my, my scene here. I'll try to get that fixed, but you can see behind uh, where I was um, that we actually have a, a live view of the Alaska Sea Life Center's bird habitat, which several of the fish we just saw in that clip uh, actually live in there. So we've got some rockfish in there uh, cruising around. I believe there's actually a little canary rockfish going right by the top there. Uh, there goes rockfish. 
But this is also where that wolf eel is um, that was discussed in there. Again, that's my favorite uh, of our fish here is the wolf eel that lives in the bird habitat. Uh, she's just really sweet and will actually come take food from your hand uh, and actually just swim back and forth between you and if there's another diver in there, uh, which there always are, I suppose there's two, um, but if the other diver's not cleaning or uh, picking up shells off the bottom, something like that, uh, then we can actually pass them back and forth. Oh, there, I just popped back in. Who knows? All right, anyway, so uh, what can you tell us about your background, Haley? Uh, so my background has my favorite fish, which you might remember from the beginning of the video. So this little guy right here in my background, this is a grunt sculpin. So they are my favorite kind of fish. Um, they have these cute little pectoral fins, like right here, and then their little snout over here, this little snout over here. Um, it's very, very cute, adorable little fish. They're pretty cool to watch because they actually go around their habitat by hopping on those pectoral fins. Um, and they'll also try to camouflage in with the rocks and they kind of hide themselves in shells of hollowed out barnacles as well. So that's especially cool to see. But yeah, these guys are my favorite fish and some other employees at the Sea Life Center as well. They're, they're pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, we've got the, the grunt sculpins. I enjoy that you pointed out the, uh, the, the snout. Um, yeah. Or I actually, uh, Haley pulled some pictures together for this for, for us to talk about. Uh, and she specifically called this, this photo uh, the grunt fish snoot. Um, <laughs> as you can see, it's got quite a little snout there, the grunt fish sculpin. So they are pretty fantastic. Um, so we actually have a question uh, from, from Maddie. And she wants to know, um, how, how do we determine what kind of fish can live together? So obviously we have lots of fish at the Sea Life Center. Uh, and we, we don't want them to you know, eat each other. Um, so it, that's kind of where it comes from is we're just using a little common sense sometimes, um, you know, making sure that we're not explicitly putting something in that is a predator of another animal in there. Um, but at the same time, you just never know. Like rockfish, for example, uh, they will eat pretty much anything that they can just gulp uh, into their mouth. Um, and so we just have to make sure that the other fish that are in there with the rockfish none of them are small enough to just get gulped in. Um, another thing, it's not, you know, not a true fish, but we do have them here at the Sea Life Center are our sea stars or starfish. Um, and that's one that you kind of got to just watch, make sure they're not getting too bold, getting too big, because uh, they'll they, they can eat uh, other invertebrates that are in the, the touch tanks here at the Sea Life Center as well. Um, but yeah, so the grunt sculpin, that's your favorite fish. My favorite fish, um, And yep. you said, you know, they're hopping around on those big pecs, um, which if you saw in the clip, uh, they actually do just kind of scoot. They can swim. Uh, it's not very well suited for swimming. If I pop this picture up, you can actually see um, that tiny, tiny little tail at the back. Uh, that's actually the, the photo that Haley's got there for her background. Um, but that teeny, teeny, tiny little tail does not uh, afford them much in the way of speed. So they are uh, not the best swimmers, but they kind of scoot around. And something you talked about was that they can actually um, sort of camouflage themselves because the way that snout is pointed. Yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me put up the snoot picture again because I love it. <laughs> because of the way it's pointed, it actually resembles uh, barnacles a little bit. Now, we've got some really, really big barnacles around here. Um, and when that barnacle dies, you know, when, when, when the animal passes on, um, they leave their shells behind, and that's, you know, you just find them in the wild. You can just find empty barnacle shells stuck to surfaces. Uh, and something that we see here with our grunt sculpins is they'll actually tuck themselves in uh, to those empty barnacle shells, and their little snout just kind of peeks out, uh, and they really just look almost like there's a barnacle in there. Um, so there's just a little bit of camouflage afforded by their, their strange shape. So I'm going to uh, rotate on over to what I had listed as my favorite fish, um, which, of course, was our wolf eel. Now, we do have several wolf eels here at the Sea Life Center. It's not just uh, the one I talked about, but that one is the one that I have interacted with the most. Um, our dive program here, I'm, I'm a member of the dive program, and uh, we have to go into some of our larger habitats, which includes the bird habitat, to actually clean those habitats. Um, but... Uh, the, the, the wolf eel in there is the one that we get to feed by hand, even though there are other wolf eels. And in fact, 
Um, we've even had wolf eels, multiple wolf eels, in the same uh, enclosure before. I we have, believe we have a picture of that here. Let's see if I can find it. I've definitely seen two of them hanging out before. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Um, I don't know. They're kind of, you know, people say there's there's such thing as like um, like ugly cute. I hear it a lot for like dogs, right? Like, oh, it's kind of ugly cute or, or whatever. Uh, wolf eels, I guess, kind of fall into that. Um, but uh, they're just, they're really sweet. And when they're little, when they're very little, they actually uh, look entirely different. We have a photo from uh, Joel Satori, um, who we've been fortunate enough to have here at the center a couple times. Um, he uh, does this project, Photo Arc, where he's actually documenting all the animals that are in human care around the world. And in some cases, uh, those animals are the only known living uh, example of their species. Um, so it's just a really cool project that uh, uh, Joel Satori does there. And we've been fortunate to have him here. And he just takes these stunning photos. So this is a younger uh, wolf eel that we have there. Maddie wanted to know, do the uh, do the, the fish ever bother the birds or, or vice versa? Specifically, do the birds bother the fish? The birds, every once in a while. Have you seen them, have you seen them chasing any of our fish around? Yeah, sometimes the birds will kind of dive down and they'll chase some of our fish around. Usually it's not too bad. The fish yeah. don't really mind, but sometimes the birds will kind of just around. And follow them, them. yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the birds are uh, hunters. To, to begin with, underwater, they dive down, they actually catch fish. Now we have, you know, big rock fish, and the bird is wanting to catch like a little tiny fingerling or something. Right. Um, but they, they will still, you know, kind of chase the, the fish around. And the fish are big enough that the bird's not really going to be able to eat them or anything. Uh, I think the birds kind of just are, are bored sometimes, and they're like, oh, that thing, I'm going to go get it. Um, which is why we introduce, uh, you know, toys and, and that sort of stuff for enrichment with our animals because we want to make sure they're not bored where they just go, oh, I'm going to go pester that. So if we ever see them chasing a fish or anything like that, um, then it's a question of, well, how do we get them to not do that? And that kind of goes back to the original question of do they eat each other? You know, it's just a, a thing where we have to keep an eye on the interactions of these animals. Uh, and if we ever do think that there's a problem, then what can we do to uh, fix that problem? As far as the fish bothering the birds? I don't think so. Um, none of the fish in there are quite big enough or the birds quite small enough um, yeah. to, to, to do anything. But, I mean, there are fish that eat birds. Uh, that is oh, definitely, yeah, definitely. definitely a thing. <laughs> All right, so we have another fish uh, that was brought up several times in that clip, and that is our decorated war bonnet. Um, just a strange fish. This is the one that someone said uh, looks like it has broccoli growing out of its forehead. Right. I don't know. What do you feel about the the war bonnet here, Haley? Well, they definitely are a very interesting looking fish. Um, this one in particular, we affectionately call buoy fish. Buoy because fish, yeah. It's pretty much permanently in this buoy. Um, he'll kind of occasionally stick his head out and kind of guard his territory. But the rest of the fish actually looks very different than you might expect. It's kind of an elongated fish. Um, not quite like an eel-like body, but it definitely is longer than maybe your typical fish. So when they come out in hiding, they're actually pretty surprising because they look kind of different than you would expect. But most of the time, this is how you're going to see him, just this little head poking out of that buoy or in between some rock crevices, um, kind of just defending his little house. Yeah, and we had that in the clip. Uh, you could kind of see it was a side profile even of the buoy. We don't usually, um, the buoy's kind of shifted over time and that sort of stuff, so we don't really get these nice views uh, the way the buoy is currently. Um, but Haley was mentioning the rest of the fish's body, and again, we have a fantastic photo from Joel Satori. This is probably, you know, we're, we're picking favorite fish. Wolf feel is still going to be my favorite fish, but I think this might be my favorite of the photos from Joel Satori of our animals. Yeah. Um, it's amazing photo. Just not something you ever see uh, for the war bonnet. Uh, they're usually either tucked, you know, back in a buoy or in a in a crevice on the rocks. Um, and even even if they're fully out and visible, if they're just tucked down in this crevice, it's not quite as uh, curious looking as as this fish is. Um, the decorated war bonnet definitely uh, has a unique appeal to it. So. One of the fish that we have here at the Sea Life Center, uh, types of fish that we have probably more than any other type of fish, 
uh, are going to be our rockfish. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of rockfish. And this was actually, uh, someone mentioned a canary rockfish. I believe I have a, a photo of a canary rockfish I can pull up here. Um, but this one that we have right now is, this is a quillback. Um, and all these rockfish kind of have nice uh, pronounced uh, dorsal fins. Um, but this one in particular, the quillback, this is where it gets its name. Uh, it's, it just pops those, those quills, those spines on its back right up. And I love this photo. Um, I think it's just because it's kind of caught in that, like, hey, uh, facial expression. I don't know. Yeah. He's probably, like, mid-gulp, but he looks very, very alarmed or, like, get off my lawn. Yeah, I'm sure he's just yawning. Um, the tiny yeah. quillbacks are really cute to me. Um, mm -hmm. They, I mean, tiny rockfish in general are really, really cute. Before we get to the uh, canary rockfish, we actually have the, um, the yellow eye rockfish. So yellow eye rockfish are, are just a great looking rockfish to begin with. Um, that's sort of what the adults look like. And those swimming around in our bird habitat, we've actually got a couple of them outside of the bird habitat. Um, so that's just a fantastic looking fish. But the juveniles uh, are great too. Um, you'd never really expect. Uh, there's our little, little juvenile uh, yellow eye. Um, just such a, a different look. Uh, you know, they got the stripes that they lose. Um, and they're very teeny tiny at this point. I'm looking for that canary. Oh yeah, so here is the photo I had of the canary rockfish. Uh, if anyone's kind of looking for some inspiration, the canary rockfish has this really gorgeous coloration to it um, mm -hmm. that just makes it stand out. I think that's even what was said in the uh, favorite fish clip was they like it because it stands out amongst the other fish that are in the bird habitat. Yeah, as far as rockfish, they're really easy to identify because of that coloration. So it's kind of like if I see that orange and white, you'll always know it's a canary rockfish, whereas some of the ones like pullbacks or china rockfish or brown rockfish, they all start, kind of start to look the same in certain light. But the canaries are very distinguishable. We, we actually uh, have some footage here. Let's see if I can pull that up. Um, we've got some footage of the canary rockfish just cruising in the bird habitat, so I'll just pull that up for you here real quick. Because it just, they, I don't know, there's something about them. Uh, in our uh, announcement video, when uh, I was highlighting a couple species that are here at the Sea Life Center, um, I think I called them stoic, because they just kind of drift there. Um, you know, they are usually the biggest fish in the enclosure here. They, some of them get huge. Um, and they just don't care. <laughs> they just drift around. They're not really afraid of anything. And yeah. if they are afraid, they, they, it's just a little spook, you know, like sometimes they'll get startled by something. And that's when those uh, spines on the, on the back, like on the quill back, um, that's when they sort of pop up is when they get startled. But we just thought we would chat a bit about uh, some of our fish here at the Sea Life Center, get out that little video clip of uh, some of our favorite fish uh, and if anyone has any questions about any of our fish, you can toss those down in the chat, toss them in the comments here as well, and we can hopefully answer those for you. Uh, but we are hoping that this Sunday fish sketch, uh, some of y'all found some inspiration in the fish here at the Sea Life Center. Something that really makes the Alaska Sea Life Center different uh, is we only house animals that can be found in Alaska. So, you know, I can go to other aquariums, uh, and, you know, I, I could go to an aquarium in Washington, for example, uh, and they might have like a little coral exhibit uh, with this tropical coral reef and that sort of stuff. Um, but we specialize in just things that can be found here. Uh, and in a lot of cases, I think it surprises people what we have. Uh, they think Alaska, they think cold water, and they're not wrong, but they don't think colorful, they don't think um, vibrant or fast or, or anything like that. Um, and I think, you know, with that, that picture that Haley's got there of the, the little grunt sculpin or this just the grunt snout, I don't think I ever would expect or would have expected this to be in Alaska before I came up here. No, it definitely looks more like a tropical reef fish um, than I would have imagined as well, yeah. Yeah, the tropical fish or even right now I've got, oh, it's leaving. Um, there's these walleye pollock that just have uh, gorgeous coloration on them, uh, sort of this uh, leopard pattern on the side of them. So some really cool animals here. Uh, and I encourage you to, you know, check out our website, alaskasealife.org. 
Um, if you are going to sketch any of our fish, we would love to see them. So please, on Sunday, share those drawings up on Twitter with the hashtag SundayFishSketch. Uh, just like I've got, whoop, just like I've got right up here, Sunday fish sketch is the hashtag, and that'll let us all share our fish together. Uh, and we are actually going to be doing another live stream um, on Sunday at 2 o'clock Alaska time, 3 o'clock Pacific, or 6 Eastern. Uh, and Haley and I, for the past couple weeks now, have been doing these streams where we actually just do our, our fish sketches live. Um, and you can actually see some of those past streams either on our YouTube channel, or if you go to the hashtag uh, Sunday Fish Sketch, or even to the Alaska Sea Life Center's Twitter account, at Alaska Sea Life, uh, you can see uh, some of those, those past pictures that we've had. Um, they were fun. You know, every week's a different theme. So this week, we get the Alaska Sea Life Center's theme. We're pretty hyped about it. Um, but last week was, it was art. It was, we had to uh, take like a classic piece of art and turn it into um, a fish drawing somehow. Yeah, it was a fun one. <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, definitely. All right, well, I'll just check here real quick. We've got no more questions. So again, if you do have some questions a little later on, just pop them on down in the comments, uh, or you can tweet at us, uh, and we hope that you will share your drawings on Sunday. We're really excited to see what people have. You know, pick your favorite fish. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe you go to our website and you say, whoa, hold on, they've got these fish, and it's one we didn't even highlight. That's fine. Go ahead and draw uh, whatever fish the Alaska Sea Life Center inspires you to draw and we'll hopefully see you Sunday for Sunday Fish Sketch. So thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.